Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to The Irregular at Magic High School, Season 2, Episode 8. And in the last episode, so much happened that honestly it's going to be a struggle to try to cram this into a recap, but I'm going to try to touch on everything while still keeping it short and sweet. So anyways, the episode started off with Lena talking to her commanding officer, and she pretty much told her, alright Lena, forget about the parasites for now, right now we need to focus on the original mission. We need to figure out who is responsible behind Scorched Halloween, and that her current suspect, Tatsuya, was the one that she needed to focus on for the time being. And they also gave her like this legendary weapon, or legendary CAD, that I think may be on the same level as the CAD that Tatsuya used to cause Scorched Halloween, maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but all I know is that this CAD is a force to be reckoned with. And so, on Tatsuya's side of things, he is with his friends, they go into the shed or whatever it is. Well, I guess it's more than a shed, but the, like, android that they had i think her name was pixie pixie started acting weird and i believe uh mizuki she went up to it she used her special eyes and she could see that there was definitely a parasite inside of pixie but this parasite wasn't nearly as dangerous as we thought all the parasites were and we saw like the android smile and apparently the story is the parasite was looking for a host, it found Pixie, went inside of Pixie's body, and apparently parasites don't have minds of their own. Their, their like only objective is to find a host for them to live inside of. And then once they enter a host, then they begin to kind of adapt their host's personalities. But Pixie doesn't have a personality since she's an android, so she began to somehow, I don't know, like telepathically connect with Honoka when she was walking by. And now she has Honoka's personality, and we all know that Honoka's kind of head over heels for Tatsuya, so right now, Pixie sees Tatsuya as his master. And then, the episode finally ends with Tatsuya encountering Lena. They have the battle of the ages, where Tatsuya- not Tatsuya where Lena is using the legendary weapon against him and it actually like fires and attacks so quickly that Tatsuya can't even dodge it and his entire arm gets blown off. But then he ends up distracting her and then while she's distracted, he auto repairs his arm, whips out his CAD, he kind of stuffs it into the weapon. So when Lena fires her blast, it's kind of jammed and she gets blown back and Tatsuya's arm arm just gets completely mangled, but Lena's on the ground, she's pretty beat up, Tatsuya walks up to her and he pretty much says like, you're too naive, you should give up, like, being a soldier. And then she falls unconscious, and this is where Tatsuya just completely blew my mind, because he made a backup of all of their data, he erased all of the data that they had, and he kind of tampered with Lena's memories to make her forget about her fight with Tatsuya. And then when she woke up later, she pretty much came to the conclusion that Tatsuya was not the culprit behind Scorched Halloween, so she's probably gonna start targeting someone else. So Tatsuya quite literally 180'd this entire situation. And also, the last thing I wanna mention is Lena, she tried to call back to her headquarters and no one was answering. And then we look and we see the entire room where her team was supposed to be based is completely empty. So like, we don't know, did, did we take them out? Did they give up? Like, we don't know what happened to them, but I guess they abandoned the mission after realizing that they lost all their information. But anyways, that is it for the recap and it is time to get straight into the episode. If you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like. It helps me and the video out so much more than you might think. So if you could take the time to do that real quick, I would very much appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to the channel for more Mahoka Coco content in the future. But anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get right into this episode. 
All right, so real quick, before we get into the video, in this reaction, I'm going to be trying a new reaction style, which can hopefully make the reaction enjoyable through just this video alone. However, of course, due to copyright, I'm going to have to do some censoring. So if you'd like to enhance your experience or add a little bit more magic to the reaction, I have some recommendations for you guys. If you've already seen the recommendations, then feel free to head down to the timestamps and jump ahead to when the reaction starts. But if you have not, here they are. The first one, as you can expect, is going to be to watch this through the picture-in-picture -picture style. And this is very easy to do on PC, and it's also possible to do on mobile as well. If you're doing it on PC, then this is how I do it at least when I watch reactions. What I do is I go on Google Chrome and I use the extension Floating Player, and with that, literally all that I have to do is go to the Source Anime Video website that I'm watching, click the extension button, and then it gives me a little pop up and then I just drag that pop up in front of the YouTube video and it should look something like this for you guys this way you can see the whole anime you can hear the whole anime and all you have to do is just press play as soon as the countdown starts however the second recommendation is to please head on over to the cloud crowd public discord there i will have free uncut reactions for you guys so that you can watch my reactions with the anime all in one place so if you like to do that head on over to the discord but anyways i will not take up any more of your time hope you guys enjoy the reaction and without any further ado let's get straight into it all right so this is the part of the video where you guys will grab your source videos pull them up and get ready to sync them with me because we will be starting episode eight of Mahoka Coco season two in three, two, one, go. All right. Ooh. I tried my best to keep the recap short and sweet, but there was just so much that happened all in one episode. All right. Oh, okay. Because of engine trouble. Hmm. Oh, I see, I see. So maybe they didn't give up that easily. Dang. There's no way he thinks of her like that. As leader of the Yotsuba. I don't think he'd ever leave her, dude. Oh! Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we are getting hints of this, I think, in episode seven. Wait, no, that was last episode. In episode six, I believe. Mm hmm. Yeah, from uh, Valentine's Day. We saw, I mean, we kind of already knew how she felt about Tatsuya, but I guess that was the first time she actually, like, openly admitted it. It was to herself, but still. We were, um, we're kind of starting to see now that, um, wait, didn't she say something that, like, kind of hit pretty hard? Like, I think she said, like, she wishes that, 
um, that like they weren't siblings or something like that. Because that must hurt, man. You know that she cares so much about Tatsuya, but it's kind of like taboo, I guess, for her to ever like pursue him. So, uh, I feel so bad for Miyuki. And she has a lot of competition. There are plenty of girls lined up to win over Tatsuya. So, Miyuki's definitely got a lot on her plate right now. But, I mean, I don't know. Tatsuya, he kind of was, like, emotionless before. And now he's starting to develop emotions so i wonder if he we know he cares a lot about miyuki but i wonder how he feels about all the other girls like does he see any of them as like um more than friends maybe we don't know but clearly they're not above miyuki yet Hmm. Oh. Oh. So like duplicating. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Okay. Mm-hmm. To modify their body. Okay. Interesting. Oh. Okay, okay. No successes. Yeah, true. The organization. Okay. Ah, I see. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. So they're all kind of interconnected, even though right now they're probably too far to connect directly with their thoughts. But um, she can kind of be used as a double-edged sword. Like, we could use her to find the locations of the other parasites, but they can find our location as well. What the heck is this ritual going on here? This is so bizarre. And they're waking up from what it looks like. We... Chinese necromancy. But he's still asleep. Let us search for our missing comrade. They must be talking about Pixie.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Miyuki. <laughs> She's just a robot. Calm down. She's a robot. <laughs> it's just like a mannequin at the store. All right. I love this music too. <laughs> It's so, like, goofy and lighthearted. Oh, wow! She looks almost exactly like Hanukkah! Oh, wow, she looks like a normal girl. Hmm, Chinese necromancy. I'm still trying to figure out what the heck was going on there. All right. Dude. <laughs> Aoyama Cemetery. Alright. There's Erica. Mm hmm. Oh, dang, she's got the goons. They're all ready to freaking mobilize. <laughs> Yep. They got crushed. Is this Lena? It's not. Oh, maybe? Oh, it's not! Uh, so you got a bit of a reputation! And we have not met her, but we have seen her in the opening. Ayako Kuroba. Dang. We're sending them home packing. We already have. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, we literally have them eating out of the palm of our hand. Like, we have such a, like, crazy upper hand over them. Dang. We wouldn't want any trouble to stir up. Hmm. Is she going to agree? Dang. 
saying, what about Lena? What's gonna happen to Lena? Oh, yeah, I'm a... Pretend to arrest and capture them. Oh, oh, because they're... Okay, they're pretending to be police officers. So they're going to pretend to arrest them and probably uh, take them in for questioning or something. Oh, he can already- Dude, Tatsuya's insane, man. I feel like that ability's only gotten stronger since when he first used it. Counterintelligence. Oh, here we go. Time to shine, Onika. So we found their locations? Or, well... Oh, okay, okay. I forgot about her magic. <laughs> she probably sees this as like scoring points with him. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we've seen this dude. I don't remember when though. Was he from season one in the auditorium? When he made that speech? It was like right before the, um, right before the nine schools competition, right? Or was that someone else? We're surrounded. Oh, they found us. Oh, and why is that? They want her back. Hmm. Yeah, because I doubt they're just going to head back where they came from. Dang. Ah, I see, I see. So they can't, like, their connection is weakened because she's not inside of a living being. Dang, I guess we have our answer then. And this is like a reflection of Hanukkah's feelings for him. <laughs> and that's why she's embarrassed. Yeah, but now it's time to take down some more parasites. <laughs> Ooh.
but people are still fair game. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Interesting angle. So he sympathizes with us. Ooh, it's a good question. All right. Oh, that's true. That's so true. He did just try to trick Tatsuya by saying he wouldn't hurt magicians. But people are still fair game. But I think you already know it. Exactly. Alright. Let's see what you guys got, man. Let's see if you can handle Godsuya. Or die. Oh yeah, he does know how to destroy the parasites now, doesn't he? I mean, he always did, but, like, before he missed the opportunity. Dang! He shut down his magic and took out his limbs. And since he's kind of confined to that body for the time being, he, he can't, like, get back up and fight normally. And is this what he's gonna- Yup, yup, okay. And then once it frees itself- Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the plan, man? The brain. Oh, the heart. Yeah, I knew that. Ooh. That man is in agony right now. Oh, he thought he was slick! Miyuki caught him slipping. Now, yeah, if he's not going anywhere, now go for the heart. Oh, okay! She's got some moves, too! Mm hmm. Alright. Oh, snap. Oh, so her resolve? Or her, like. What? Is she self destructing? Too much emotion? It's like an emotion overload, maybe? No, it's not. Maybe her feelings towards Tatsuya must have resonated with uh, Pixie. Dude, what the heck was that? So, like, her hair ties or whatever the heck those are started glowing, and then she started resonating with Pixie, and Pixie started glowing. What the heck was that about, man? Dude, what a... <laughs> what a weird episode.
Man, I'm there's I feel like I have so many questions. Like okay, so we know 100% that the parasites were the ones in that room doing the ritual and I'm guessing all of those um bodies were like regular humans that they had gathered for the parasites to like jump into as hosts. But the reason why one was still sleeping is because that one was reserved for the parasite inside of Pixie. And so they came here, they tried to strike a deal with Tatsuya, saying like, all right, I, we came here to make a deal. We will stop being hostile towards all of the magicians if you give us that robot that of course has their ally inside of it. And then Tatsuya, knowing the fact that they were still gonna go after humans, he went over, he asked Pixie, like, what do you think about all this? And she, of course, reflecting Honoka's feelings and her personality, she said, like, she wants nothing more than to stay by his side. So he started asking them, like, how can we trust you? All of this jazz. And they told him that they know how the magicians are treated because I believe the host that he's in right now is a magician. And he knows that they're all pretty much lab rats and that the military and pretty much regular people use them as weapons pretty much and they don't really treat them as they would another human so he tried to use that to like sympathize and try to reason with tatsuya but tatsuya number one i don't think he holds any ill will towards like humans and also they hurt his friends so like he had to kind of get payback because they very well could have done some serious damage to Leo. And ultimately he just flat out told him, no, they started fighting Tatsuya. Now, this is another question that I have. Um, so we know that if the physical body of one of their hosts is killed, then they can leave and find another host, right? But Tatsuya, doesn't want to like i don't know he struck the heart and so this guy he's not dead he's still alive but he's in a lot of pain because his heart is being like injured or i don't know what the heck he's doing to it but his heart is kind of going nuts so is tatsuya like how is he going to destroy this parasite that's i guess the second question i have why did he go after the heart instead of like, I don't know, attacking the parasite inside of him or maybe like freeing the parasite and then attacking it while it's in the air? Like, why is he striking the heart and confining him or trying to keep him inside of this body for longer? And then of course, the last question is what the heck happened in the end with Pixie when she was glowing? And we could see, like, I don't know if she transformed or what, but something definitely changed inside of her once Honoka said that she wanted to, um, once Honoka expressed how she was feeling in that moment, that immediately resonated with, um, the parasite. So, I don't know. I think, I think we're gonna see Pixie pop off next episode. But I mean, it's not really needed right now though, right? Because we got two of them already taken care of. So what could she possibly do? What could have possibly changed? So many questions, so little answers. But um, anyways, with that, man, I had a blast watching through this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Make sure to leave a like if you did. Comment your thoughts on that episode down below and subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. But anyways, with that, I'm going to head out, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.